What's up guys and welcome to Graphic Designer Pro. In this video we'll be showing you how to recreate the Slack logo in Adobe Illustrator. Now, most of you will probably be familiar with it, but the Slack logo designed by the famous Pentagram Design Agency is a fairly simple looking mark on the face of it. However, with such simplicity comes attention to detail and accuracy in its execution. You can download a free template file from the description below that will give you a guide to work with when creating this yourself. Okay, I'm gonna pass you over to Rory now, who'll take you through the process. Thanks, Ross. So jumping straight into our template file, we have a few assets set up already to help with the design of this logo. Now, before we start, it's worth mentioning that this is just an interpretation of the Slack logo. And this is more of an exercise to show you how useful simple grids can be to create consistent and well-proportioned logos. So we're going to start by setting up a simple grid to work with to create this. Now, if you've downloaded the template file over in the layers panel, we do have a guides layer already set up that if you just enable by clicking the visibility you will see we have some guides already set up for you to use. But we're going to show you how to create these from scratch anyway so I'm just going to turn this layer off and I'm just going to create a new layer to place our new guides. So I'm going to do this by grabbing our rectangular grid tool. Now this can be found underneath the line segment tool over on the left hand toolbar so simply click and hold on the line segment tool and the fourth option down here is the rectangular grid tool which I'm going to select. Now I can use this by simply clicking and dragging and you can see we get a grid of rectangles. If I hold shift I can lock this to be a perfect square. I can use my up and down arrows to add more rows or my left and right arrows to add more columns. But I'm going to create this a different way so I'm just going to delete this and I'm simply going to click once and we're going to get a dialog box popping up where we can plug in some precise values. So first of all we have the size here. Now I'm not worrying too much about this. The only thing I do want to make sure is that both of these values are the same. So for example, I'm just going to type in 400 by 400, but we're going to resize this anyway afterwards. This is just to make sure that it's set up at a perfect square. Down where we have horizontal and vertical dividers, I'm going to enter the values of 18 in each of these boxes and then go ahead and click OK. So as you can see here, we've just created an 18 by 18 square grid which is what we're going to use to create this logo. I'm just going to scale this up slightly so it's nice and big and I'm just going to center it against my artboard. So what I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to change the stroke color here so this stands out a little bit more and I'll bump the stroke weight up to two point. And what I'm going to do is from the top left hand corner click and drag a rectangle down and I'm going to go four squares wide and I'm going to go to the full height of this box. Next I'm just going to grab my select tool and holding option on a Mac or alt on a PC I'm just going to click and drag this off to the right I'll hold shift to lock this to the same horizontal plane and I want to space these out by one box essentially one column of this square grid if I simply press command D or control D on a PC that's just going to create the same transformation that we've just done so creating a duplicate of the rectangle at the same spacing and I can do this one more time and we now have four rectangles going the width of our square grid. I'm going to select all four of them now and pressing command C or control C on a PC and then command F or control F on a PC, we are going to create some duplicates. Now with my selection tool, I'm going to the top right hand corner, clicking and dragging to rotate this and I'll hold shift to lock this to a 90 degree angle. What I can do from here is just delete the rectangular grid sitting behind and these are the guides we are going to work with. Now a great feature in Illustrator is that we can take any objects and convert them into guides. I just simply need to click and drag over these and I can go up to view, down to guides and we have an option to make guides or you can see the keyboard shortcut is command 5 or control 5 on a PC. So if I click that these are going to change to guides. You can see they are a cyan color so they're a little bit difficult to see but they'll work just fine for this example. So one last thing I'm going to do before locking this guides layer is just add 
add a square right in the middle of these guides. So again, just grabbing my rectangle tool, I'm going to use these guides to snap to, drag out a perfect square right in the middle, and this will come in useful later when we are adding the logo element. But again, I'm just going to hit Command-5 on the keyboard to convert this square to a guide as well. So now I'm just going to make sure that this new guides layer is locked so I don't accidentally move or edit any of these guides. And now we're ready to start recreating this logo. So as you can see, with the help of these guides and this reference image, this is a very simple task to do from this point. All I need to do is grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to start from the second box in from the top left and just click and drag to create a perfect square. Moving along one box, I'm going to create a rectangle this time, going the height of two of these squares. And now it's simply a case of rounding off some of these corners. So with this rectangle still selected, I'm going to click and drag the full amount on these live corner widgets until we're left with this pill shape. Now I'm going to grab my direct selection tool and on our original box, I'm going to click and drag over the top two anchor points and the bottom left anchor point. And again, with my live corner widgets, click and drag these in to the maximum amount so we're left with this abstract speech bubble shape. I'm just going to click and drag over both of these objects and flip the stroke to a fill. And it may appear that these aren't snapping perfectly with the guides. However, if you switch to your outline view, which is Command Y or Control Y on a PC, you will see more precise line work in this view with our guides and the objects. And you can see that they are actually snapped perfectly. So pressing Command Y again to return to my normal view. From this point, it's very simple to complete this. Now I could create more squares and rectangles based on what we've just done. However, even easier than that, I'm going to select both of these objects and I'm going to grab my rotate tool. Now this is just R on the keyboard. I'll zoom in a bit so we can see this a bit more clearly. You'll notice there's a small cross here sitting in between them and this is our point of rotation. Now if I hold Option or Alt on a PC and click and drag on this cross here, we can move it and we're going to move it down to the center point of the square we created with our guides. So you can see this is snapping to this center point and if I just let go, we get a dialog box popping up. So I'm going to enter a value of 90 degrees and if I click preview, you can see this will rotate these objects on that point of rotation by 90 degrees. But what I want to do is click this copy button. If I zoom out, you can see this is just making a duplicate of these objects and the same same technique that we used earlier, I can simply press Command D or Control D to perform this same transformation again and one last time and we've got all of the elements for this logo in place now. So the last thing I need to do is just apply the colours. So I'm just going to simply select two objects at a time, press I on my keyboard and just eye drop from the colours on the left hand side and I'll carry this out for all of the colours here. And last but not least, I'll just turn off my guides layer and we're left with with our version of the Slack logo. So as you can see, it's very precise and simple to create a logo like this with the help of some simple grids and guides. So there you have it, a fairly simple process to recreate this logo, but understanding proportions and being accurate is crucial to this. If you have any questions or other logos you'd like to see deconstructed, then drop a comment down below. And if you want to learn more about graphic design, we've created a free one hour training where you'll discover the top five secrets of successful designers, which saves you the hassle of having to figure it all out for yourself. We'll be showing you one, how to immerse yourself in the sector you're designing for, two, creative thinking and how to spark creativity, three, what good composition is and how you can achieve it in your designs, four, how to pick the right colors for your designs, and five, how to pick the right typefaces for your projects. So if you're serious about leveling up your design skills, then make sure to sign up for the next free webinar. Space is limited and these events always fill up fast because they're significantly better than the information others charge you for and ours is free. The link is in the description. You're not gonna to want to miss it. I'll see you there.